everyone. Mary and Espresso Press Design. Welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Actually, I was going to say something different, <laughs> but I guess old habits die hard. But thank you for stopping by. And today we're going to do um, the what to do with your back sides of your digitals in the event you don't like to print your back sides. And these are generally going to be different than the usual that's out there as far as I can tell. So I know that uh, there are a lot of ideas on what to do with your backsides, but hopefully I've come up with some that you might not have thought of. So, and then today I'm also going to do the giveaway as a celebration for reaching 1,000 subscribers. I'm going to explain that. And just a uh, flip through of my latest product and uh, this is another ornament I've been working on. I did get a lace embossing folder so I've been uh, still working on that for the craft show. That's progressing not as fast as I would like, but it's progressing. This is my latest paper um, debut, and it's just journal cards, apothecary label, journal, journal cards, and um, different sizes and a few labels. So um, these I think are, oh boy, four, four and a quarter by, just a minute because I can't remember, three and a quarter by four and a half. and two and a half by about three and a half. So these are, can be pretty much ATC size. So just three pages on that. I just created it on the fly because I'm still working on my next kit. And that's going to take a while. So, the giveaway. The giveaway is going to be a $25 Amazon gift card. I am going to limit the time frame for the entrance. The entrance will be chosen from the comments on YouTube. And hopefully you'll be a subscriber, but I'm not going to make that a condition. And um, I will just choose a number out of a hat, and then I will count down from, I will limit the comments to a time frame of 24 hours. And then I'll choose a number out of a hat, and then I will count down to that corresponding comment number. And that's pretty old school, but that's, I saw, that's how someone does it, and they actually ship a book, but I won't be shipping anything. However, if you are the winner, I will need your email. And I will also need to know if you would prefer 
your Amazon gift card from the country of your choice rather than Amazon.com. And that will be Amazon Canada, Amazon China, Amazon France, Amazon Germany, Amazon India, Amazon Italy, Amazon Japan, Amazon UK, Amazon Spain, or Amazon Australia. So those are the countries that have their own Amazon sites. And if you know what you would like to purchase <coughs> and you would like to cut down on the shipping costs so that you can spend more of your gift card on the actual item. If you would like me to do that for you, I will, but I will need, if you are the winner, I will need your email address and how you can contact me is on YouTube. Or you can go to my website and just contact me through there. And just put um, Amazon gift card giveaway winner in the subject so that I know you are the winner. So just stay tuned. I will be... Um, I'll do a separate video of the number I picked out of the hat and I will count down the lists and you will be able to see that live in its own separate video. Okay, let's get started. So what you'll need are some pastels, some crayons, an embossing folder, some foam, you know, the uh, foam sheets, a soft cloth, and ink of your choice. So first of all, I'm going to demonstrate the uh, border technique that I forgot to mention last time. And this is pretty probably the easiest and quickest one of all. But depending on your ink color, you still might be able to tell it's a border. But all you're going to need is your little one by one ink or a square ink pad or an ink pad that you can feel that you can maneuver easily. And you're just going to take it. And swipe it down the edge. Of your border. Something like that. So that's, that's one that I forgot last week. I did not make a list of all these. And I'm sure if I forgot any more, they'll probably pop into my head somewhere around midnight tonight. Okay, so moving on, and I'm probably just going to use white paper for this rather than actual back sides, but probably one of the best things you can do is to order, if white really bothers you, one of the best things you can do is order cream colored printer paper. Now sometimes Amazon has it and sometimes they don't. But there is a cream or sometimes it might be called natural and that way you will get rid of your stark white. If you're just going to have to decide what you want your paper to be. If you want your colors to be the most prominent thing, usually you would choose the brightest white you can find. 
and naturally if you're going to be printing on cream that's going to affect your colors but since most people want vintage they'll probably feel that's desirable so the first one since I don't have um, a decent neutral in my pastel set I'm just going to use blue okay and what you're going to do and it would probably be better if I had chosen a blue where the um, coating is not on the side of the pastel and I'm also picking up every little bump on this surface okay now you can either spray this with a fixative or you can just take your cloth your soft cloth and rub off as much as possible similar to the other the border after a certain point it will not come off anymore and your paper will just have a tint so that's one way to dry what I'm going to call dry dye your paper okay the second technique I hope I didn't lose it already oh there it is the second technique is to do a rubbing now you can do this with an embossing folder but it's a little a little easier to emboss onto your onto a flat surface and then use your embossed flat surface so you can just put that under there and then just take your crayon or your pastel or your pencil and do a rubbing and if you use the side of your crayon which I don't I no longer have anymore <laughs> the one thing I shouldn't have given away I gave away and that was um, I had a huge Ziploc bag of broken crayons and I donated it so I no longer have it so that's technique number two and you can change the color over your page as much as you want whatever color you want and then you can cover your back page and that won't go anywhere okay and if you use the side of your crayon you cannot you virtually can't tell that it's a crayon okay that's number two so number three is you can use um, your foam you can die cut your shapes from your foam and you can make stamps you can also emboss your foam and make stamps so that's technique number three I guess it is and guess what I got my walnut stain so I'm going to use that and I'm just going to apply it to my foam piece here and I made one a little smaller because a larger one you have to make sure you hold it in place or it will 
you won't get a nice transfer. So there you go. And with this ink, I can actually get ghosts. Okay, so I just chose a design that people would most like to use probably for a background. And, um, okay, well, that doesn't apply to this one. And these will stay, you can use these for a long time because you're, you're likely never going to remove the 3D from a piece of foam. So you can create all kinds of those and use those for a long time. Okay, technique, what are we on? Four. This is similar to using the wax paper to print. And what I did was I just took a piece of wax paper and I tripled it, glued those layers together with a glue stick, and then I took it to my embossing folder and I embossed it. And then what you are going to need is a roller, a paint roller, which I have one here, or a brayer. And then I simply, um, I cannot find these anymore to save my life. Um, my Lowe's used to sell them all the time and I just have several of them because I use these to cut it to do my edges when I'm painting walls for my cut in edge and they don't have them anymore. Whether Amazon does, I don't know, but they were like two dollars. And I just keep them in the craft room because they're handy. So what I did was I just rolled this over. I'm going to trim it off here as soon as I get where to trim. I just rolled it over to the width of the roller. And then I applied some glue, glue that I know will adhere wax paper. So I used my um, book binding glue. And I just held that in place until it was glued. Okay. So I'm going to see if I can slide this out here so we can wait till it's dry. Oh, what did I do with those paper clips? Oh, here they are. See if I can clip this. Until it's dry and then we'll try that one. But I already have one made. If I can get it back together. And I'm just going to slip it on here. Back on here, hopefully. Hopefully, it's coming apart a little at the edges. There we go. Okay, so now you have a roller. So you can do this. You can also do this with bubble wrap. 
you can do it with yarn, you can do it with rubber bands, but this way you can um, use your embossing folders. And I chose my lace embossing folder. So I'm just going to get a pad here that's Stampin' Up pads are great because they're big enough and they stay juicy for a long time. So you're just going to roll your color. Oops, be careful of that. And then whichever way you want to go. And I don't know if I'm going to get ghosts off here or not. So whichever way you want to go, cross your page. You're going to transfer your print. And that is what you'll have on your back side. If it bothers you that there is still white showing through there, you can do the double. You can do the pastel first, and then you can do this over the top just like as if you were going to stencil. And then if you wanted to stencil some larger designs, you could also do that. So you can have more than one design going on on the page. So I'm just going to go back to my pad here and use a different color and then maybe, you know, in the corners or up the sides I might want two different colors, two different designs. You know, I would probably probably suggest choosing a rose or something <laughs> for your foam piece. Just choose two different designs where it doesn't look so busy is what I'm trying to say. So that is the next one and the last one. And um, let me just see if this is dry yet. Hopefully I got up to the very edge. I think it is. Okay, and then you can save these wherever. this back on here and then we will try this one. See how that works. But this is um, similar to the, um, you can buy these rollers. I don't know if they still sell them, but I'm pretty sure they do. But you can buy these decorative rollers, but this way you can make your own. And this is color number two, or design number two, and color number two. And you can easily transfer onto your paper. So that's a good way to um, do. Also do mixed media techniques if you are like me and <laughs> you're too lazy to, um, well not too lazy, I shouldn't say lazy, um, too not enthused about 
getting out all your paints, your jelly plate or whatever, and doing all that stuff. So let me just get a, another tint over here. I should have done that first to show you, but... Now some people say just scrape some of your powder off your pastels. But I didn't have very much luck doing that. And I'm sure you could also if eyeshadow and all mica powder and all that is your thing. You can also do that, but I do have all of that in my drawer, but this is the fastest and easiest for me personally. And you can put as many colors as you want in there. Just add a little purple. Blend it out. See all those all those strokes will blend out. And um, just keep wiping until you don't get any more off on your cloth. And your paper will maintain a subtle tint. So, there we go. The um, homemade roller, pastel, the foam printing, the rubbing, and I hope that's, I hope that's it. <laughs> if there's another one still floating in my head from when I first conceived of this idea weeks ago or months ago, I don't even know when, it was in my notes of things to do a video about. So we are at 28, 26, and um, that's probably going to be it for this week, guys. Um, thanks again for stopping by. And don't forget, uh, Celebration, $25 Amazon gift card. I will count down the comments. Draw, I will draw a number out of a hat, count down the comments, and that number will be the winner. Don't forget to contact me. I need your email address. In order to send you an Amazon e-card, e-gift card, and let me know if you would prefer it to be sent from your own country. From that list of countries that have their own Amazon sites otherwise it will be from amazon.com and you will just have to um, suffer the consequence of the high cost of shipping but I'm not willing to ship anything to a worldwide audience so it was either limit the gift card to amazon.com only and increase the cost of the gift card so that you would actually have some money left on your gift card or ask you to let me know if you would like me to do that for you which I will so remember leave a comment hopefully good luck on being the lucky number and write Amazon gift card winner in the subject and let me know if you would like it to um, be specific to your own country's Amazon. Okay, thanks a lot everyone. I'll see you next time and I'll be doing the video of the winner and I'll also be doing a short to um, help promote this video. So have a great week. See you next time. Bye.